So HBO Max just recently added 13 criminally underrated movies. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about each one and why you should watch them. On this list, we've got horror movies, a couple comedies, a couple of art films, and some really interesting movies that just didn't get enough love back when they were released. Odds are there's several on this list you've never seen or heard of. This video is sponsored by CyberGhost VPN, but first I wanna tell you about Monster. Now this is a little known indie horror movie that was definitely done on a low budget, but man, does this movie have a good look to it. I will say it is a very simple setup. You've got a mother and daughter trapped in a broken down car in the middle of the woods, that's it. Eventually, they begin to believe there's something stalking them out in the woods. For a movie with such a simple setup that took no time to explain, Monster actually delivers quite a lot. I mean, yes, the story is fairly limited, it almost feels more more like a short story, but it is filled with some fantastic moments that are incredibly tense, especially considering there's actually not that much happening on screen aside from a mother and daughter trying to escape a monster in the middle of the woods. Now, if you're into indie horror movies, this is a fantastic one. If you are not though, this may still make a good watch for you. I mean, it is ranked number 13, but this is a list of bangers. My next pick is a little known mystery movie from the early 90s that actually has a pretty decent cast with Andy Garcia and Uma Thurman in Jennifer 8. Now this was released several years before David Fincher's Seven, but it's entirely possible David Fincher took a lot of inspiration from this movie. It has a very similar look to Seven. Not quite as sharp, but it's always raining, they're always in the dark with flashlights, and it is a series of murders not totally unlike the ones in Seven. I was also reminded a little bit of the movie Prisoners, because again, they're in the rain and the snow, but Andy Garcia plays the detective who ends up falling madly in love with one of the potential witnesses played by Uma Thurman who is actually blind. She does a fantastic job playing a blind woman in this movie. This was before she was really a big star and you can see why she became one. It's really a pretty incredible performance from her and from Andy Garcia. He's someone who is most famous for their supporting roles, but he really does a fantastic job of carrying this movie. If you like darker mystery movies, this one is a little bit slow paced because it's, you know, 30 years old, but it is still a fantastic watch if you don't mind that slower pace. My number 11 pick also has a pretty slow pace, but man, is this a beautiful movie with some incredible performances. The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford. Now I know that title is a mouthful, but this is really a beautiful movie. This was written and directed by Andrew Dominic, who also did Killing Them Softly with Brad Pitt, and more recently, Blonde on Netflix. And The Assassination of Jesse James has a beautiful style to it. Some really incredible, subtle cinematography, but there's a train robbery early on in the movie that is particularly stunning. And then it does tell the story of Jesse James pretty well. It's not this lavish, wild western. It's much more subdued. It's Jesse James later in his life, but it really is a fantastic film. It's a great western, but like I said, it too has a very slow pace, but if you can get into this one, there's a lot to enjoy. Now, before talking about the top 10 on this list, I will tell you the full list of all the movies discussed can be found in the top pinned comment down below, not the video description. But these movies are mostly only available in the US right now. Their availability will differ from country to country, which is why you should consider using today's sponsor, CyberGhost VPN. If you don't know, VPNs help keep your web browsing safe, secure, and most importantly, private. It's nobody's business, and trust me, they are looking. But CyberGhost also lets you disguise what country you're in, which is not illegal to do in any way, shape, or form. Every country has a different life library on every single streaming service, more or less, and you can access them with the flick of a switch using CyberGhost. And because they're such a good partner, they give me fantastic discounts to pass on to you. Right now, you can sign up and get up to 84% off a CyberGhost subscription, which amounts to $2.03 per month plus four extra three months to unlock more movies and shows than you could ever possibly hope to watch. Go watch any of my old videos, doesn't matter how old they are, 
the movies are probably not where I said they were. They've moved on, but you can probably still access most, if not all of them using this little trick. And again, don't forget, it keeps your web browsing safe, secure, and private. You need to have a VPN these days. You might as well use one that I recommend that lets you unlock a ton of movies and shows. So again, just go to the link in the description. You can get up to 84% off. You're gonna be paying just over $2 a month to watch way more movies than you had access to before. It's a fantastic tool. But speaking of fantastic stuff, let's talk about the top 10 movies on this list. Now I promised a couple comedies on this list and my number 10 pick is not only a really hilarious dark comedy but it also stars Danny DeVito and Billy Crystal in Throw Mama from the Train. Danny DeVito also directed this and he is just a fantastic director when it comes to dark comedies. This is no exception. He has this terrible overbearing mother that he wants dead while Billy Crystal has an awful ex-wife that he wants dead. They put each other up to some murders and it is a really funny movie. Neither one of these guys is really capable of pulling off a murder and they're fantastic together. If you've been a fan of either of theirs over the years, this is one of those movies that was just a fantastic mix of their styles of comedy that just did not get enough love back when it was released. If you've never seen it and you like dark comedies, this one really is a true gem. My number nine pick has some comedic elements, but this movie famously flopped at the box office despite it starring Julia Roberts, Brad Pitt, and James Gandolfini back when The Sopranos was hot. I'm talking about The Mexican. Can't you just tie me up some more? I mean, f you shoot me? Tie me! Yeah, I, I don't have a rope. So you shoot me? It's the American way. There's a good chance a lot of you actually saw this movie back when it was released and probably don't remember it very well. This movie was kind of famously marketed poorly. They tried to make it like an Ocean's Eleven type thing in the marketing, and it's a vastly different movie. This is actually directed by Gore Verbinski, who would go on to do the Pirates of the Caribbean, Rango, and A Cure for Wellness, all really visually stunning movies. And the Mexican has an incredible visual style as well, even if it doesn't quite feel like his work. Brad Pitt is just having a lot of fun on screen. He really is kind of the best character in the movie, but you get amazing performance is from other people, especially James Gandolfini. He is great in this. And the movie's got kind of a quirky, wild style to it that just, again, was not marketed to audiences, I think, properly back when it was released. So this is one of those movies that's better to go into with low to no expectations. Sometimes with big stars like Brad Pitt, you can raise expectations a little too much, but The Mexican is a really fun watch if you go into it with the right mindset. Now some of you will laugh because my next pick is a horror movie that was famously sort of underrated back when it came out. And I think it's because a lot of the folks who would have otherwise appreciated House of Wax probably passed on it because it happens to star Paris Hilton. Now this was back when she was really in the news a lot. This was one of the few big movies that she was in and she's not in it long. Her presence is not a reason to skip this movie, but it's also a horror remake, which are typically pretty lackluster. However, House of Wax does a lot of things right. Not only does it build tension and actually have some good quality scares in it, but it turns into this big budget over the top thing by the end that most theatrical release horror movies just don't bother with. They go for cheap scares and House of Wax is actually pretty expertly directed for a horror movie. It's not the godfather of horror movies, but it does have some elements that are right up there with the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They just sort of got lost in the sauce being in this sort of Paris Hilton the horror movie. But if you passed on this one back in the day and you like good solid horror movies, go into this one expecting to enjoy it and I really think most of you will. My number seven pick is the only other horror movie on this list, and it too happens to be a horror remake. The reason The Crazies makes the list is because it too is an exceptional horror remake. 
The original is a cult classic from 1973 and it's good in its own right, but the remake stars Timothy Oliphant and takes place in a small town where suddenly people start going crazy and killing each other. It's very much like a zombie outbreak movie, yet instead of lumbering zombies, it's people you know and love that have suddenly snapped and start doing crazy stuff. And for a horror remake, they also just don't go for cheap scares. It's quality stuff with decent performances and just a good delivery of the story. This movie also has a really raw, realistic look to it. And ultimately the climax and everything does pay off. This movie, again, has fantastic moments that are solid. They still hold up well over 10 years later. This is just a gem of a movie. If you're the least bit interested in the setup, whether you've seen the original or not, the Crazies makes a fantastic watch. Okay, my next pick is a somewhat recent release that is also a dark comedy, but has a very different tone, kind of a weird, almost Napoleon Dynamite type tone with very, very dark undertones, the art of self-defense. I'm interested in buying a gun. I need something that can fit into my hand. Sounds like you're after a handgun. Now in this story, Jesse Eisenberg plays a young man who is the victim of a fairly brutal assault. Like I said, it's dark stuff, but he decides to take a martial arts class and it is not a good one. If you don't know, there are a lot of bogus dojos around the world and this movie is about one of them. There are lots of movies that try to tackle the subject of toxic masculinity and I will say most of them don't even come close to nailing the subject matter. The art of self-defense is incredibly nuanced and has a lot of layers when it comes to this subject matter and it doesn't forget to be funny. There are a lot of incredibly funny moments that are just delivered dry, deadpan, but they're incredibly clever. The writer-director Riley Stearns is also known for a movie called Faults and more recently a movie with Karen Gillan called Duel. Always weird, quirky stuff. I like his other movies, but I really do think The Art of Self-Defense is his best work by a mile. Okay, my next pick is also kind of a dark comedy, but it's so weird and offbeat, it's hard to even label it as that. And it comes from some recently acclaimed directors, Daniels, the two maniacs behind Everything Everywhere All at Once. Now, if you enjoyed Everything Everywhere All at Once, that does not mean you are a lock for enjoying Swiss Army Man. So hear me out. In this movie, Daniel Radcliffe plays a corpse. Yes, he plays a dead, rotting corpse the entire movie. And not just that, he plays an overly flatulent corpse. So that's the setup. If that turns you off too much to enjoy a movie, then this is not gonna be the one for you. However, if you wanna embrace the weirdness that these guys create, Swiss Army Man is just an incredible ride. Paul Dano plays a man marooned on an island and begins to befriend this flatulent corpse, and it makes for some wild moments that are not only just these crazy, completely unique unto themselves things to see in a movie, they also end up conveying a story pretty well. Now, I do think they did a much better job of conveying the final point in Everything Everywhere all at once. Swiss Army Man is a little bit elusive, but if you lock into this incredibly bizarre movie enough, then it does have a really nice message towards the end. Another quirky comedy that, yes, is underrated, but maybe deservedly so, because it could have been so much better, is The Men Who Stare at Goats. Now, I know I just kind of bashed it a little bit, but this really is a fun movie, but man, does it have some incredible characters in it. Clooney is doing a fantastic sort of Coen Brothers style character in this. Same for Jeff Bridges, he is fantastic. Ewan McGregor is particularly good, but Nick Offerman has a great moment. Stephen Lang is fantastic in this movie. Robert Patrick, legendary character actor Stephen Root. They're all in this and it's a fantastic soup. The movie just didn't quite meet expectations back when it was released, but it's still just a fun, wild movie that's loosely based on real events. It feels a little bit like a ripoff of the Coen Brothers movie while not being quite as good as most of their comedies, but still, it's got a lot going for it. Okay, my next pick is technically a dark comedy, and then I've got two pretty intense thrillers as my top two picks on this list, but The Lobster stars, again, recently critically acclaimed Colin Farrell. 
But this was actually directed by Yorgos Lantimos, who is maybe more famous for The Favorite, which got a bunch of Academy Award nominations, and The Killing of a Sacred Deer and Dogtooth. So all offbeat, weird experiences in terms of movie watching, but The Lobster is my personal favorite of his. This takes place in an alternate reality or future where if you have not paired up and found a mate by a certain age, you go to this resort designed to help you pair up and match with a mate. If you are unable to do so at the end of your time there, you were then turned into an animal of your choosing. Colin Farrell's character for some reason chooses a lobster. So a very complicated setup. That was the easiest way that I could explain it. And the movie manages to get even more complex as it goes along, but it never quite lost me. You also get an amazing performance from Rachel Weiss and a pretty exceptional one from John C. Riley. They play some of the people that are hiding out in the woods, trying to escape this dystopian future they find themselves in. And the movie is not only stunning, I mean, it really is beautiful to look at, but the dark comedy elements just keep hitting non-stop. If you can get into this satirical dark comedy headspace, The Lobster is a masterpiece. If you do not, I can imagine this would be a bizarre watch that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to you. Now my next pick is actually a Scandinavian movie. You will have to read subtitles for it, but I highly recommend checking out The Guilty with one exception. If you saw the Netflix original titled The Guilty, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, that is the same exact story, almost to a T. However, the original, the Scandinavian version, is expertly executed. I felt like the Netflix version basically just tried to copy this original version and didn't really nail any of the points attention nearly as well as the original did. This is a wild edge of your seat ride that takes place exclusively in an emergency call center and really with only one character on screen. Every other interaction is over the phone very much like Locke starring Tom Hardy, except this one is an actual thriller with a lot of tension and just, again, it's incredibly well put together that they could keep you on the edge of your seat as much as they do. It's a shame the Netflix one kind of blew it. I'm not saying that's a terrible movie, but it just does not have the impact that the original does. So if you're able to retroactively watch the original without thinking about the Netflix one too much, Definitely check it out. If you've never seen either, I cannot recommend enough that you pursue the original version. It is just dynamite stuff. And then my number one pick is actually the first feature film from one of my all-time favorite directors, Danny Boyle. If that name doesn't sound familiar, he's probably most famous for directing movies like Train Spotting, 28 Days Later, Slumdog Millionaire, and the sci-fi movie Sunshine, which I've recently recommended here on the channel. I love his work, and his first film is a killer thriller movie, Shallow Grave. This is also one of Ewan McGregor's first films, and in this movie, he and two other flatmates take on a new roommate who immediately dies in their room and has a large sum of money stashed away. And what's so great about Shallow Grave is it takes three very ordinary people, thrusts them into this incredibly intense situation where they have to figure out what to do, and they end up being kind of pitted against each other. And Shallow Grave just escalates in a way that was just masterfully done, especially from a director who really had no prior experience. This is a movie I watch every couple of years, and even though I know what happens, it is still a tense, wild ride. If you like good, classic, Hitchcock-style thrillers and you've never seen Shallow Grave, congratulations, this is gonna be one of your new favorite movies. But that is the list. Again, all of the movies discussed can be found in the top pinned comment. I've also listed where they are available in a variety of countries along with that CyberGhost link so that you can start watching these no matter where you are in the world or when you happened to catch this video. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special HBO Max episode, and you will see me on the next one.